Hello everybody, welcome to Harper Carroll AI. I'm Harper and today we're gonna to talk about why there aren't any long-term distinguishable features of generated AI content. So I'm inspired to make this video because I came out with a video yesterday about the SpaceX launch. So it was like the landing of the SpaceX rocket into that like clamp into the docking station. It was pretty amazing. What happened was when I was trying to watch it, I saw that there was a crypto scam on YouTube. So let me just show you the video here. Okay, this is crazy. So SpaceX just launched the fifth Starship launch. And so we're trying to watch the live event on YouTube, but look at this. So look, there are these live events right there and it's by SpaceX, but if you click it, financial freedom, the modern world needs. This is an AI generated is is crypto scam. It does not matter where you are. Just scan the QR code to participate. Mobile, and it's so just going to get better. You can kind of tell it's AI mobile, now. The most convenient way Beware. Tell your friends. This is now just going to get di more and more difficult to discern. By the way, I want to be really clear here. It's not Elon or SpaceX that's doing this. It's someone else trying to capitalize off the launch. So beware. So I got a lot of comments on that. And some of them were about, you know, one, are there any kind of distinguishing features of AI generated content, kind of like lucid dreaming? You know, in lucid dreaming, if you look at digits on a clock, then you can kind of tell that it's lucid dreaming, at least according to the user here. And I was thinking about that. And so I wanted to share why that is not the case with AI and um, at least not long term. Back when AI generated images were really new, one of the things that you could, or new, to the public, one of the ways that people found they could discern AI generated from a real image was by looking at the hands. They found that AI had a lot of trouble making hands look like real hands. They would often have them have two or three fingers. Um, and that was one telltale sign that an AI generated image was AI, was by looking at the hands. However, as the models have gotten better, that feature has become less and less prominent. So what I mean by that is you can find an AI generated image that has proper hands. It's gotten a lot better. The models have gotten a lot better at generating hands. And so as a result, you can't really use that as a foolproof method. Yes, if you see an image that has two fingers or three fingers, um, it is more likely to be an AI generated image, um, but especially on if, you know, depending on the way the hand actually is, but, um, you know, that is not something that you can count on long-term because the models will continue to improve and that will not be a problem anymore. And so I want to talk a little bit more about this because what it makes me think of is deep fakes. And so deep fakes are what we saw with this Elon crypto scam. We saw a video of what appeared to be Elon Musk talking, telling people to buy this cryptocurrency coin. And so it seemed, it appeared to be Elon doing that, but it actually was AI generated. And the way these videos are made are with something called generative adversarial networks. And, you know, they've been around for about 20 years and the general concept has remained the same because it's a really great method. And what generative adversarial networks do is, as I said, it's a method of generating these deep fakes, these images, these videos that appear to be something else. Um, they're, they're new content generated based on the, the style of another. So whether that's you know a new Picasso painting or whether that's an AI generated video of me. So actually let's hold here. I wanna show you really quickly an example of a deep fake, but one that I elected to make with Synthesia. And I also interviewed the CEO of Synthesia um, a few weeks ago, so I will link that here. And it was really interesting. It's such a fascinating company. It's the world's largest AI video creation platform. And they made these pretty spectacular AI avatars. So I made one of myself. Let me just show you the video really fast here. 
Hello, I am Harper Carroll from Harper Carroll AI. And today we are talking with Victor Riparbelli of Synthesia. And we are here at the office in New York. And it's been a really great time. I love New York. I was born and raised here and moved to California when I was 18 to attend Stanford, which is where I got started in computer science and AI. By the way, can you tell which one of these videos is AI generated? Yeah, I asked people to guess and I found that a large percentage of people had a hard time guessing which one is real and which one was AI generated. And as you can see, actually, some people said the hands were messed up. I actually don't see any issues with the hands. They look pretty real and normal to me. Um, I know I can like grasp my hands, <laughs> but, but I think that's actually how my hands appeared. What gave it away for me was the mouth, like um, the text. So the way the video was created was I uploaded a video of myself, the top video, and then the body, bottom video was um, based on the video I uploaded of myself plus a text um, script that I wrote for myself. So based on the text and based on the video, real video of myself, Synthesia was able to generate that video. They cloned my voice, or at least a relatively high quality clone of my voice, not perfect, um, but relatively close, and um, created an avatar that changed the mouth to speak the text words that I had sent over, and then generated an audio based on the clone of my voice to, to have the audio portion of the text. The way I was able to tell was that the mouth didn't perfectly sync at all times to the audio. Um, but what I'm getting at here is that that is going to continue to improve. So let's get back to what we were talking about with GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks. As I said, those are the models that are used to train these deep fakes, kind of like the video I just showed you. And so what general, Generative Adversarial Networks are is a model that contests, consists of like two models. It has the generator and the discriminator. And they're two models that are continuously improving and kind of fighting against each other. You pass in a video or image in a style that you want to emulate. So for example, the video of myself speaking, I uploaded about five minutes of content. And the generator will generate a new video in the style of the old one what it believes is that. Um, to start, it might just generate like a random image, video, whatever, or it might be slightly higher quality than that, but it generates a video to its best of its ability. And then the discriminator, its job is to say, is that a real video of Harper or is that a fake video of Harper? And so, you know, sometimes the generator passes it a real video of me. So say it takes just like a ton of little clips is the generator passing in a real video or a generated video, a generated clip? And so the discriminator then has to say, is that a real clip or a generated clip? If the discriminator gets it wrong, then the discriminator knows it needs to get better at discriminating or rather discerning what's real and what's fake. So for example, if the generator creates a generated AI clip, passes it to the discriminator and then the discriminator says, hmm, that looks real, then the discriminator or the generator wins this round and the discriminator needs to say, hmm, I need to get better at discriminating between what is real and what is fake. So I need to examine these videos of Harper better. I need to learn these features so that it can't fool me. On the flip side, if the discriminator is able to say, that's AI generated, the generator then needs to say, hmm, I need to get better at fooling the discriminator. How do I make a better AI generated video of Harper? How do I emulate the style more? And so both of these models are getting better at fooling the other, or you know, one fools one, the other has to discern whether it's being fooled. And so they get better. So this is bringing up the concept of an arms race. And what arms races are is when there are two parties that are continuously improving or taking steps forward, and then the other one has to take a step forward too. And so let's look at an example like with Meta. When I was at Meta or formerly Facebook, I was deciding which team to join. And one of them was the spam detection team, like spam bots. And it was basically just a continuous arms race, also known as a cat and mouse game, where basically, you know, as soon as Meta is able to, or Facebook is able to say, oh, look, we can tell that something is a bot based on, you know, the way that it behaves, like it's able to find a certain behavior of a bot that is 
it did give away to make that thing a bot, then Facebook can action on that. They can say, for any user, if they behave in this way, then you know either delete the account or just make them have to verify themselves. So kind of put hurdles over accounts that act in this way. For example, you know, limiting the amount of comments that you can post in a certain, you know, in, in like 10 seconds, how many comments can you leave? Things like that. And so Meta is able to put these restrictions based on their analysis of how bots work, but then the bots just adapt to those restrictions and are able to come back in a new force and are able to get around those restrictions, right? So it's this continuous cat and mouse game where new restrictions are placed, the model, the bots realize that those restrictions are in place, they change their behavior to get around the, the restrictions, and then Meta slash Facebook then has to go and find new behaviors and then put restrictions around those, and then it's just this endless arms race, cat and mouse game, whatever. And so you can see how this applies to the GAN, these, the generator and discriminator. It's this arms race, right? Where the discriminator has to get better and the generator has to get better. And it's this constant, it never ends. And so in that sense, you can believe and you can know that these, these models, these deep fakes are just going to get better and better as uh, more compute comes out, as there's more training data. Um, these deep fakes, the discriminator and the generators are just going to get better and better and better. And then, I mean, we won't be able to discern. Like the features that make us be able to discern now will go away. This arms race that we have will continue so that any features that we have that we know are dead giveaways, fraudsters, so now let's go back to the, you know, spam slash Facebook kind of arms race. The fraudsters or bots will continue to adapt. And as soon as one of the features that make us make, you know, the fraud detectors or good guys or what have you be able to, to tell that a fraudster is a fraudster, they will change their behavior. So it just never ends, right? So if there is any way that we can tell that something is AI generated now, it will go away. So if it's in the case of someone actually intentionally trying to be deceptive, the deceptive person will just change the behavior so that that is no longer an issue and that's no longer something that you can use to tell. So for example, if the hands were a dead giveaway, then the fraudsters would Photoshop the hands to make them actually look real, right? Like they would get around that restriction. Or you know, maybe it's just an inherent quality of the model where there's no fraudster, but that the, the the model just happens to produce these hands. No one's trying to fool anyone. People are just generating images. Um, there isn't like a deceptive nature of it. Um, but it's just, again, the models will continue to get better as the GANs get better. So, right. So we have both the model getting better, the models getting better at generating to make them seem more realistic. And then also the human intervention that will, in the case of fraudsters or people trying to be deceptive, they will also step in and make sure that anything that we decide is a telltale sign um, that the compute or that the models have not yet been able to get around, for example, hands, they will mitigate that so that that isn't something that people can just point to to tell it's AI. Does that make sense? Um, so I hope that that is clear. So again, we have that like model's own ability to create really good human or highly realistic images and videos, and then also um, the fraudsters doing their added part to anytime there's anything we can do to tell that AI is AI, they will get rid of that discerning feature. So anyway, I hope that this is helpful. If you have any remaining questions or if this wasn't clear enough or if I missed something, please do comment below. I love to hear from you and um, just, yeah, love to hear like all that you want to share and hopefully this was helpful and this explains it and if it didn't and the i was not clear at all like let me know i can try again i can add some context over text like over the comments um but yeah if you found this helpful please subscribe and um commenting helps me too and liking and um yeah so hopefully this explained it to you um Kind of my mission here at Harper Carroll AI is to explain things about AI in a way that is clear. 
um, when I was learning AI, I definitely understand a lot of it is really explained, I think, in a way that is not easy to grasp. And one of the things that I find that I can do relatively well based on feedback I have received is explain um, things in a way that are graspable. So always love to get feedback, whether it was helpful or whether if it wasn't graspable enough, I'm improving constantly my own internal machine learning model. So again, I'm always heading towards more and more graspable in my explanation. So love to get your feedback, whether it was a positive thumbs up or a thumbs down, let me know. And um, see you next time. Please subscribe if you, if you liked it. And <laughs> And follow me on Instagram, sign up for my weekly AI news update that is on my channel, harpercarolai.com. You can put in your email and get a weekly news update um, for all cool AI news happenings. And um, yeah, there's like about 500 of you now. Um, still kind of small, so if you want to be one of the early signer-uppers to my newsletter, I would love that. Um, so yeah, anyway, just happy to connect with you and I will see you next week and hope this was helpful. Talk to you soon.